Hello and welcome to this voted for video by my patrons and YouTube members. This is for the month of March and they voted for how to create ladders. So in this episode we're going to go through how to create a dynamic ladder so you can build it at any height and it for it to work with you climbing at it. So to show you the climbing code, we've got these three ladders here. I can walk up to it and just climb up the ladder and I can climb up any of these ladders no problem it will take me down and up this one up here and to show the dynamic nature of these things I can drag this ladder out and I can change its height by simply just changing the slider down here to adjust the height of the ladder so we can make it climb up as high as we want really and the player should be able to climb all the way up it so it makes it really useful building levels and you can create this with any mesh you want um, I'm going to provide you with these meshes I've created for this. So by all means you can use them for whatever you like. So let's get started with how to set this up. So to begin we need to create a new blueprint class. And we'll choose actor. And this we're going to call ladder. Now the ladder actor is going to have a couple of components. And most of the work is going to be happening in the construction script. The first component we're going to need is the base of the ladder. So that's going to be a static mesh. And we'll call this ladder base and change the static mesh to use the ladder base which is uh, this one okay alongside that we also need a box and that's going to be the trigger volume for when we need to decide when we want to climb it that we want to make sure it's not attached to the ladder base but it's separate from it so they fall as siblings in the hierarchy here we're then going to go over to, to the construction script. So the way this works is we're going to have a slider that will dynamically change the height of that ladder. And the way it works is we take the A value, divide it up by the height of the ladder pieces, and then on a loop, add more pieces to our ladder, then capping it off with our end cap. So let's create a new variable in here, and we'll call this one ladder height. And this is a float. You know, drag this out, and in my case, mine are 100 units high, so I need to divide this by 100 units. Now, this will go into a for loop, so I put in a for loop, and this will go into the end, the last index there. So, on the loop in each body, we're going to create a new static mesh. So we're going to go add static mesh component and that component we're going to go over to here and choose the middle pieces of our ladder in that case is ladder component 7 in my case and in here we need to change where it's going to connect to so this is going to create them but we need to actually move them and change where they're going to be attached so this is relative so it's relative based to the root of the player of uh, the actor here so this takes relative transform. I'm going to split that. Oh, sorry. Split that. And we're going to just use this relative transform location. I'm going to split that again. Because we're only dealing with height because it's a ladder. So what we we'll do here is take the index from our loop, and multiply that by a float. And I multiply it by the height of each rung. So that's going to be a 100 units. And I know it's 100 units because that's what I'm using over here. So I'm going to put that now into the relative transform location Z. Now to see this working, we're going to go to our ladder height here and make it editable. And then go to our world here. And let's drag this out into our map. Like so. And on the details, I should see ladder height appear. If it doesn't appear, that's because you haven't ticked instance editable. So once you've ticked that, you'd be able to change this value. And if we go above 100, you'll see the ladder increase in height. Now, if you like what I did before when I added a cap to it, that's quite simple to do as well. So we go into our event graph, uh, sorry, our construction script. And the loop has a completed branch. So on that branch for the completed, come down here and do add static mesh component. And in here, we're going to choose the other ladder component piece. And we need to, again, change the transform. So right click, split, and then right click, split that again. 
and this is going to take the uh, the final size that we have and plug that in and multiply it by 100. So I'm going to take this truncated value here and then multiply that by 100. And that will go into the final height there. And that should take it onto the final height of our ladder. So if I go back now, we'll now see the final ladder rung has been changed to our loopy one. Okay. So that's the ladder basically being set up. And we can say you can change the height of this, no problem, quite easily. But now let's go through the process of adding uh, the box collider to it. So the box collider is quite simple. What you're going to do on this completed branch still, we're going to drag our box out. And the first thing you need to do is reposition it to be halfway up the size of the ladder. So with your box, we're going to set relative location. And we're going to change the relative location in the Z. So split that. Then you take our ladder height and divide that by two. And we should see the box of our ladder here change its height location to halfway up the ladder height. Now the thing we have to be aware of with this is that we actually need it to be a little bit higher than this because we need to make it go above right to the top of this. So I'm going to offset it by adding a value to it. And I'm going to add a simple flat value of, let's say, 100. And now the box has been adjusted up even further. Next, I'm going to make it so it changes its size. We need now stretch its extents to go the whole width of the whole length of the ladder, rather. So with our box, drag it out in our construction script and we're going to go set extent and this is basically the size of this box collision again we're going to split this and in x we're going to put in 64 in y we're going to have 32 and then the z is the height so for that we're going to take the ladder height out And we're going to divide that by two. And put that into our Z extent. Hit compile and take a look at what you've got now. So now we should see our extent here extend above our map, uh, our ladder here. We may want to continue adjusting this. Well, the idea is that we have our extent covering the whole width of the ladder. As I change it, you can see it extends to it. So let's make it so we can extend it up just above like so and you're good and you're golden there. Now you may want to make sure it's lower but in our case the player character should still hit it and that's what matters most. Uh, but if you want to make it lower just change this value here, this one here, to maybe say 50. And it will lower it down closer to the floor. Just be aware that you'll need to adjust the top half of it as well. Over here, we can add a value to this as well. So here, I'm going to add 100. Okay. There you go. And that's the box extent done and the dynamic part of our ladder. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to add in our code for actually climbing the ladder. So that's quite simple to do. We're going to go into our ladder code here and go to the event graph. Now all this happens on the box collision. So we're going to take this and right click on it, add event and begin overlap. On begin overlap, we're going to first of all check the other actor is actually the player character. So cast to player, first, I don't need to do a cast actually, we'll do is equal to and we'll do is equal to get player character. And that'll be a branch. If it's true, we're gonna do a line trace. Now the reason why you wanna do a line trace is you wanna make sure the player is looking at the ladder when they walk past it. Otherwise they'll start climbing a ladder when they're not looking at it. 
So I'm going to do a line trace from the player camera point of view. So get the player camera manager. And then from there, you can get the location of the camera. And also get the forward vector of the camera too, which is basically which way is it facing. The location is going to be the start point. And the end point is going to be the forward vector multiplied by a float of 500. And then add that onto our starting position. And that goes into our end here. Now, because we're calling this trace from the ladder itself, we need to turn off the ignore self tick box. We then take the out hit, split this, and we're going to check if the hit actor is ourself. So drag this out, do equals two, and you want to check if it's equal to itself. So what it's going to do is when the player walks nearby, it's the ladder is telling the player, hey, do a line trace from yourself to me. And if you hit me, then you can climb me. So this will go into a branch. And then we're going to get the player character. And set movement mode. to flying and that means it turn off gravity for us and allow us to go up in the air now to make this work for the player character itself I had to go into my player character and make one little addition we'll go through that addition here so this is using the basic first person template but essentially what we need to do is do a check we want to use the actor forward vector uh, if, as a the uh, false value here but if it's true, we've got currently the head mount display. We're not worried about that. But we also want to check whether or not we are is flying. If we are flying, we want to make sure we're using the first person camera instead of the forward vector. This allows us to look up to climb up and look down to climb down. So that's quite important. We need to make sure your character movement is flying and it gets you a boolean. And you can use that in a select vector node. Choose the either the camera vector or the forward vector of the actor. So with that in mind, we're going to go in here and just add the end overlap. Add event end overlap. We'll check if this is equal to the player character. And that will go into a branch. Like so. We're then going to take the true value. And we're going to set the movement mode of our player character. To falling. So if we were to fall, uh, slide off the ladder to either to the left or to the right or backwards, we'll make our character fall. So here I can push play now. Go up to my ladder. And climb it up by looking up it. There you go. And it just shows you that you can look down as well. If I go to climb it, look down, and it'll start climbing down as well. And there you have a ladder. Now, this is without animations, but you could quite easily add animations to this as you just enter this state here and just tell it to play an animation. You're climbing. Find the animation to your speed. But there you go. The basic first-person template ladder. If you like this video and you want to see more of my content before anyone else, head over to patreon.com forward slash Ryan Ailey. A big thank you to all the patrons who did vote for this episode. Thank you again so much for your support. It really is amazing. Now, if you're watching this and you have yet to subscribe to the channel, please hit that subscribe button. It really does help me out a massive amount. So thank you so, so much. If you want to see more stuff on ladders and other climbing mechanics, leave a comment below. Always interested to see what kind of stuff you guys want to learn how to do. Thanks very much for watching and I'll see you all next time. Bye everyone.